differential equation is when the variable is in the exponent. When the variable is in the exponent. I told you last week when we started this unit, that's what this unit is all about, is these types of equations where the variable's in the exponent. We're going to start by solving today. Then we're going to do about three classes of theory, which will get us into solving different kinds. And then we do the real world applications, and then we're done. Then like done, done, like done the course, done. 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 You mean boo. Boo, sad. Exponent. Uh, just a recall again of the exponent laws. Ex exponent. Ex experiment, it kind of looks like. X to the m times x to the m. X to the n plus m. X to the n to the m. What's the difference beside these? Because these are the two everyone misses up. Yeah, two bases, one base. So two bases. One base. So two x's in the first one, one x in the second one. X to the n divided by x to the m. X to the negative n, one over x to the n. Square root of x, x to the one half. And then we just apply that to any kind of root becomes x to the 1 over n. So those are the ones we're going to use most often today. Do you already have your piece of paper? Sure you do. I know. I do. Isn't he in there? Oh, they went outside. That's right. Of course he did. Probably next to his bank card. So we're starting with the easiest kind of exponential functions, which is when they have what's called common base. And then we'll spend basically the rest of the unit looking at when they don't have common base. Because those are the most common ones. The ones without common base are more common. Hmm. Life. Just a little review of something you might find in handy in a second. What's two to the two? And you might want to jot this down in your paper as well. What's 2 to the 3? Ah. 2 to the 4? 2 to the 4? We'll go up to 2 to the 5. Okay, so those are the common ones we expect without a calculator, as well as 2 to the 0 and 2 to the 1. But I figured they're obvious. What about 3 squared? Three cubed. Three to the four. And that's about as high as we expect with the threes. Four squared. Four cubed. That's as high as we expect with the fours. And then five comes up. Five comes up a lot. Five squared. And five cubed. 125. High five to Kerr who got all of those ones. Going to the methods. Step one change all bases to a common base. Change all bases to a common base. Number two, simplify each side using exponent laws. Simplify each side using exponent laws.
simplify each side using exponent laws. Solve for x. So example number one. What makes these different from other equations you've seen up to now is everything that you use to solve equations up till this point is going to fail. So we move x's onto one side. Well, how do we do that when it's part of an exponent? Right? We put x's together. Again, they're part of the exponent. So you'll look at this, you'll be like, uh, that tells you it's probably an exponential equation. So for these kinds of equations, what you want to do is look at the base and you want to get what's called a common base. So two and four. We'll take a look at the cheat sheet here. Can we change two into a base of four or four into a base of two? Four into a base of two, because it's right up here. So I'm not going to touch the left. I'm going to keep it exactly as it is. All I'm going to do on the right is I'm going to take four out and I'm going to put two to two in its place. And you want to make sure you bracket when you substitute and then that two X just stays on the outside. That's called common base because all I did was replace four with the base of two and it happens to be two squared. Step number two is simplify each side using um, exponent laws. So there can be no brackets, no different bases hanging around. So nothing on the left I can do. But if you check it on the right, I've got brackets. So we need to just figure out which exponent law is this. So you can either look in your booklet or you can look up here. Which exponent law kind of looks like that? So what do you see here that might look kind of like this? X to the N to the m equals x to the nm. So I'm going to keep the base of 2. All I'm going to do is multiply those exponents according to that exponent law, 2 times 2x. Once you're down to one base on each side, no brackets anywhere, that's called simplified. So no brackets and one base. Now, there's a law in math that says if the bases are equal, the exponents are equal. So follow the logic here. If I have 2 to the 3 and I have 2 to the something on the other side, what does the something have to be? 3. There's nothing else it can be. I can't equate a 2 to the 3 with a 2 to the 4. I can't equate a 2 to the 5 with a 2 to the 7. If the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same. So in this step, what we get to do is actually drop the, ab the bases and just equate the exponents. Now, I've never seen this on a provincial exam before ever until last January. What we have always done as math teachers is we have crossed out the bases and we've equated the exponents. First time ever on this last provincial exam, they docked a half mark for that because they said we were canceling the bases. And we're like, well, we're, we're, we're not really. We're just ignoring the bases. Nope, half mark off. So I will probably do this because I've done this for 40 years, but do not put a cross sign through them, stupid exam people. Just equate the exponents. Just put the exponents equal. But I will probably forget, and I will probably put that line through it. But do not do that. So it just, again, just comes from the rule. If the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same. Now, this is just a straight up linear equation from grade 9. How do we solve it? X is onto one side, numbers onto the other side. So I'm going to minus x to take all the x's over to the, the right-hand side. 4x minus x. How to get rid of a coefficient. x equals. There's your first exponential equation. Just get a number. This was step one. We'll return the 4 into the 2 squared. Step two was the simplifying using the exponent law we wrote over here. Step three was just equating the exponents, but not putting a cross through those bases. And then step four is just solving for x.
the beauty about any kind of equation, is, and any kind of equation you're solving on the exam, is if you have extra time, and you're like, hmm, I wonder if that's the right answer, what can you do with it? So you can always check it. Again, I don't recommend checking your first time through because you don't want to run out of time, but there's usually enough time on the second part of the exam to go back, so now let's just go back and check. So let's take our answer of one and sub it into both sides. And remember when you're checking, you can't start moving stuff side to side. A check is you work down the left, you work down the right, you're trying to prove the two are equal. So one plus three is, and what's two to the four? On the other side, I have two times one would be four to the, four to the two. What's the conclusion? Has to be the correct answer because the two are equal. So again, I don't recommend this on your first time through in case you're going to need extra time and then you might start to panic on some of the later questions. But if you've done every question and you're checking it on scrap paper, just check to make sure the equation is true. Example two. Four squared equals eight to the x minus, two, x minus one. Step number one, change all the bases to a common base, four and eight. What your brain is gonna wanna do, especially in exam panic, is you're gonna wanna turn this eight into four squared. Does four squared equal eight? No, so if we check down our four list here, is there anything with an eight I could turn into a base of four? So that means four is not the right base. Which of these bases do you see an eight and a four? It's gotta be the two. So I'm gonna take out the four and put in two squared and take out the eight and put in two cubed. Okay, so the common base might be different than both the original numbers, and that's okay. So two squared goes in place for the four. Two cubed goes in place for the x minus one. The brackets are really important when you substitute something in. <coughs> now I know I'm not simplified because I've got a, a brackets or parentheses, so I have to get rid of the brackets. What exponent law do you see here? Yep, same one as before, one base means what do we do with those exponents? Multiply, so we get two to the two x. Now if you're visual, I'm gonna grab my red pen and you're gonna wanna bracket this x minus one because you need to be able to see that when I multiply by that three, I have to multiply both terms by the three and sometimes if you don't have brackets, your brain will go three x minus one. So here when I multiply, I get three times x, three x and three times minus one. Okay, so again, for a lot of people, putting those brackets helps your brain to see that you're multiplying. That's step two. We know we're done step two when you have one base on each side and no brackets. So you're down to just two to the something and two to the something. What do we get to do for step three? But then don't cross them out. Just equate the exponents. Stupidest rule I've ever heard of, ever. We wrote a form of complaint to the province. They didn't care. Now what? X is onto one side. Do you want X is on the left or X is on the right? Onto the left. Okay, what do we need to do with 3X? Okay. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up. So these are really easy ones to check and sometimes it's helpful because you'll catch either an exponent law you did wrong or just something that you solved wrong. Number three, same thing, we're just gonna throw some radicals in. Two to the x equals four times root two. Bases, I got a two, I got a four, and I got a two. What's the common base between all of those? Two, so I'm gonna keep the two to the x. Four is gonna come out, what's gonna go in its place? 
And at the same time, I'm going to use my exponent law on my root of 2. Root of 2 is 2 to the 1 half. Okay, so my 4 became my 2 squared, and my root of 2 became my 2 to the 1 half. If there's brackets, you've got to simplify, so we're fine on the left, but there's stuff we need to do on the right. What exponent law? X to the n times x to the m equals So you need to understand why are we adding in this one. In the last two examples, we multiplied the exponents. Two bases. So there's two different twos here. That's why it's this exponent law. So it's going to become 2 plus a half. And I'll just simplify that in the next step. What's 2 plus a half now that you've done all that fraction work and identities? Probably don't want decimals in there. We could if we needed to, but let's do some fraction work. How do we know when we're done simplifying? No brackets, and there's one base on each side. But we don't cross them out. X equals 5 on 2. Uh, I call that number 4 for some reason. Can't count. Oh, look at all this stuff going on here. Okay, common bases. We got a 3, we got a 9. Yeah, and I'll deal with the roots in a second just because I want to make sure you're understanding what I'm doing first. So I'm just going to take out the 9 and put in 3 squared. Okay, now I'll deal with the roots. Square root of 3 becomes... 3 to the 1 half. Cube root of 3 squared becomes 3 to the, remember the tree thing I told you last Thursday? So is it 3 over 2 or 2 over 3? That's always the big mistake. What's on the bottom of a tree? The root, so which number goes on the bottom? So over to 3 to the 2 thirds. I got brackets here, so I need to simplify. I'm going to bracket that x minus 1, because again, it helps people's brain to see I've got to multiply through by that 1 half. So this is going to give me 3 to the 1 half times x will be 1 half x, and a half times negative 1, negative a half. Equate the exponents, so a half x minus a half is two-thirds. If you don't like the fractions, what can you do at this point? Uh, more than just two, because you got the three on the other side. Multiply by six. If you want to deal with the fractions, deal with the fractions. Totally up to you. I would bail on them myself. So six times a half x. And six times a negative half. And six times two thirds. So 12 over. So imaginary one on the bottom. 12 over 3. And what's 12 over 3? Three? 3 
3 x equals? x equals? Questions so far? Where we're going in this unit, if we look back to number four for a second, what if this was a seven on the other side? What if it was a 15? What if it was a 22? Could we have done any of these steps? Same thing if we look back, say, for number one. What if it was a two here and a five over here? What if it was a seven? What if it was a 13, right? That's what the whole rest of the units can be based on is what do we do when they're different? Because more often than not, they're going to be different. Um, 360, 364, you can start it, but you'll have all class tomorrow, too. Shorten class, don't forget. If you've got a spare in period five, please see. Remember to be on time for the shortened class.